Garden of the Sailor Sea Curriculum is the Whatcom County affiliate of the nonprofit Pacific Shellfish Institute, based in Olympia. We have worked to support students and teachers since 2012 with a shellfish-based K-12 curriculum aligned with the Next Generation Science Standards. Hi everybody, my name is Lindsay and today we are here at Drayton Harbor at Semiamu Park to give you a virtual field trip. This will be a series of videos that will show some of the cool things we can learn about in the intertidal zone. Let's take a moment to recognize where we are. The Coast Salish have a saying, when the tide is out, the table is set. The Coast Salish have been stewards of the Salish Sea and their traditional and customary fishing grounds for thousands of years. They continue to rely on these resources today. Both Birch Bay State Park and Drayton Harbor are important Whatcom County shellfish protection districts with recreational and commercial shellfish resources. Here are some tips for how you can be a good steward while exploring the intertidal zone. For more details on these tips, visit our Family Beach Exploration Guide. As we're walking along the outside of Drayton Harbor on the Semiamu Bay side of the park, we noticed a bed of sand dollars. We found some sand dollars at Simiamu. Simiamu is a really good place to find sand dollars and we call their habitat a sand dollar bed. They like really muddy habitats where they can prop themselves upright in the sand. And the reason they need to be upright is because they are also filter feeders. And so as the tide comes in, they're using their little tube feet to capture plankton and microscopic parts. We have talked about sea stars, and sea stars are actually relatives of sand dollars. They're both in that phylum Econodermata, which means they have five parts. And if we look at a sand dollar, we can see that it has five flower-shaped petals on its top surface, kind of like a sea star has five arms. And sticking out of those five petals are little slots where two feet come out and emerge. But those two feet are different than what you might think of with a sea star's two feet. These are respiratory two feet which means this is how they breathe. So the sand dollar has these really thin two feet that come out the top and they wave back and forth in the water and they use oxygen in the water column to survive. But if you flip a sand dollar over on the back side, they've got all these fuzzy moving two feet and those are what they use to move around on the ocean floor for locomotion. So sand dollars, when they're alive, are actually black. They're fuzzy and they're full of those moving two feet. But a sand dollar that's white or kind of yellow has passed away, it's dead. And the reason for that is it's been out in the sun for a long period of time or the tide's gone out and left it higher up on the beach and they get bleached out from the sun and they lose all their color. And those two feet die and fall off. So sand dollars are iconoderms. And another fun fact about sand dollars too is that when Sacagawea came out to the Pacific Ocean with Lewis and Clark, she was so grateful to her chief back in Wyoming for letting her go on the trip with Lewis and Clark that she brought him back sand dollars from the Pacific Ocean. And he made a necklace out of the sand dollars that he wore the rest of his life. So now, if you go to Wyoming, you can actually see sand dollars on Sacagawea's graves or on postcards of Sacagawea as a tribute from the Pacific Northwest to the Middle East. Another fun fact about sand dollars is that if they're lucky, they can live for 13 years. But as we talked about, those sand dollars, they only have the two feet for movement on the bottom and not on the top. So if a sand dollar has its top side with those five petals flipped over, it can't right side itself back up again to move away. And that's one way that sand dollars can die really easily or bleach out. So position is really, really critical. They need to be with their two feet side on the bottom and the five petals facing upright which is also another reason why they like to be propped upward when they're filter feeding as the tide's coming in and out so they can just tip over and crawl away when they're done. So if you see a sand dollar on the beach that has its mouth and two feet side up and those petal sides are on the bottom, be a good steward and flip it over so that sand dollar can live a longer life. Visit our website at gardensalishsea.org for more virtual beach walks, family activities throughout the summer and fall, and sign up for our newsletter. You can also take the Salish Sea Challenge, which has ideas for keeping our watershed healthy.